Hello, I'm David DeLima, speaking to you from the Public Schools Club here in Adelaide, South Australia. Our message today is entitled, Affirming the Image of God Within Humanity. Affirming the Image of God Within Humanity. And our opening quotable quotation comes from Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who said famously, I see God in every human being. Today we're going to look at four areas. Firstly, the consequences of rejecting God's image in mankind. Secondly, we will look at the creational status of mankind. Thirdly, the redemptive potential of mankind. And finally, impressing an awareness of God's image and purpose. So we begin with the consequences of rejecting God's image in mankind. It's sad to say that human beings tend to deny the creational and redemptive truth that each person is made by God and for God and in the likeness or image of God and to be the temple of the Spirit of God. Those are the four things we can say about humanity. Each is made by God, for God, in the image of God, and to be a temple or vessel of his Spirit. Consequently, awful attacks on the sanctity of life sadly arise, which may include homicide, oppression, self-harm, so many things. Homicide such as the killing of the unborn, the newborn, the handicapped, the elderly. These occur in the belief that human life is somehow expendable. This comes from our rebellion towards God, as Cain killed his brother Abel, having failed to honour their heavenly father, as we read in Genesis chapter 4. And then we have the problem of oppression, such as human commodification. There's rape, there's injustice, there's slavery. Oppression arises as we reject Almighty God as Creator. As noted in Proverbs chapter 14, we read there, He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their Maker. And then we've got the problem of self-harm. There's suicide, there's compulsive behaviours, eating disorders. So many problems that arise among people whose identities are damaged, sometimes following abuse and neglect sometimes through demonic influence. We think of the possessed man of Gerasa, as we read in uh, the book of, of, of Mark, chapter 5. And tragically, back in 2005, the sad combination of self-harm and human commodification occurred in the United States when a dear woman auctioned her forehead for advertising purposes the winning bid of US $10,000 enabled the Golden Palace Casino to have its website address tattooed permanently on the forehead of this lady who needed the money to pay for the education of her son. Secondly now, the creational status of mankind. Well, three fundamental, asser uh, three fundamental assertions describe our uniquely created status. Firstly, we are made by God. And secondly, for God. And thirdly, we're made in the image of God. So, we're made by God. Well, it's true that all things through him were made, as we read in John chapter 1. And though we're amazed by every part of nature, people, humans, are especially valuable as the most complex and sophisticated of all the creatures. Each person is uniquely fashioned since man is the pinnacle of creation god has crowned him with glory and honor we read in psalm 8 and mankind is listed as the last the final the concluding work of creation as described for us in genesis chapter 1 and secondly we are made for god now while it's true that all things were created by him and for him we read in Colossians chapter 1, mankind has a special responsibility as what we may call the prime steward of creation. 
the prime steward. Humans have the leading role in the created order and are listed as the first and foremost created entity in Genesis chapter 2, being placed within God's garden to work it and to take care of it, as we read in Genesis chapter 2, and to name all the animals. No other creature has such stewardship of nature. And thirdly, we are made in the image of God, by God, for God, and in the image of God. While the divine character is seen in every part of creation, being understood from what has been made, as we read in Romans chapter 1, humans above all in the natural world are the main created witness to God's personality. And we are the only species to bear the image of the one who announced, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, as we read in Genesis chapter 1. We're not like God in the sense of being his equal, but in the sense that we reflect who he is. So all good or evil people can love their children, as Jesus pointed out in Matthew chapter 7, and can appreciate com compassion, creativity, irony, humor. Human beings have the ability to make promises, to pray, to love, to laugh, to intentionally procreate to compre comprehend kinship, ancestry, posterity, and our, we're aware of our own mortality. Such awareness is unique to humanity. But sinful choice has compromised our glorious creational state. So in our rebellion, we invent ways of doing evil, as Paul says in Romans 1. And we tend to regard ourselves and others as having no inherent value. And across history, there have been countless rejections of the profoundly special status of each human being by the individuals who deny God, whose philosophies regard people as objects that are sellable, uh, despicable, disposable, we might say. But by recognizing our creational status, we comprehend the great need to be reconciled to the Creator and with all humanity. And we're grieved by selfish ideologies that deny honour, protection and blessing to all people. Turning now to the redemptive potential of mankind. Although sin brings guilt and separation from God, that damages our created status, our self-concept, our relationships, our stewardship of nature, we may rejoice that our faith in Jesus enables us to receive forgiveness and a restored creational standing along with a new perspective as agents of renewal and reconciliation. So we read these words of Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians chapter 5. From now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And may the Lord had add his blessing to the reading of Scripture. Saved by God we are, conformed to the likeness of his Son, as Paul said in Romans chapter 8. And we therefore gain his perspective. So we look beyond wounded or cruel or unlovely or ungrateful or self-damaging people to see God's image. We observe in children a pattern of trust that portrays the pre-fall state that sets a standard of faith, according to Matthew chapter 18. And we see in each woman a depiction of the heavenly bride, and we see in each man a testimony of the divine husband, as we read in Ephesians chapter 5. 
reverencing every person as a unique expression of God's image, we respond to curb injustice and oppression, recognizing that whoever is kind to the needy honors God, according to Proverbs 14. So we help the needy as Jesus stands in the place of all the oppressed, the poor, the unlovely, the unborn facing abortion, the elderly who are rejected, anyone whose mind or body is ruined, but the spirit, however, is complete. Jesus stated concerning the needy, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Matthew 25. Further, we urge everyone to profess faith in Jesus as the only way to regain our creational purpose and reconciliation to God. So he delivers us from sin and death that impacts all human activities as guilty people are afraid to love and serve our Heavenly Father. But recognising the good news that we are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ, 1 Peter chapter 1, and also that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, Ephesians chapter 2, we respond to Paul's instruction in 1 Corinthians 6, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. You were bought at a price, therefore honour God with your body. So we encourage people toward the loving activities which flow from the restored condition. And finally today, impressing an awareness of God's image and purpose. Christians may be encouraged by the what may be termed the prayer of Pierre de Chardin, the prayer of Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. Grant me to recognize in other men, Lord God, the radiance of your own face. What a beautiful prayer. Grant me to recognize in other men, Lord God, the radiance of your own face. Applying such a profound approach will mean that we can not simply draw a conclusion, but may sensitively impress awareness of the creational reality and the redemptive potential that God urges everyone to join his family through Jesus, receiving his free gift of salvation. Consequently, we recruit a world-transforming multitude whose work can astound unbelievers. While many atheists give value to the person, atheism has not formed the agencies which serve at the forefront of humanitarian relief. But the Christian faith, asserting the creational purpose and redemptive potential of mankind, has founded ministries such as the Red Cross back in 1863, the Salvation Army 1865, St John's Ambulance in 1113. Without awareness of our creational status and redemptive potential, at best there is a weak response to a multitude of problems facing the world, and at worst there is those very many godless ideologies and regimes that have deliberately caused incalculable suffering and death throughout history. But care of the needy arising from the Christian faith has helped turn many from their unbelief. As noted famously by the former atheist Malcolm Muggeridge, who said back in 1968, I've spent a number of years in India and Africa, where I found much righteous endeavor undertaken by Christians of all denominations. But I never, as it happens, came across a hospital or orphanage run by the Fabian Society, or a humanist leper colony. He embraced the Christian faith after seeing the love of God for the poor and needy expressed through the action of believers such as Mother Teresa, who famously told Time magazine back in 1989, the dying, the cripple, the mentally ill, the unwanted, the unloved. They are Jesus in 
disguise. So let us always remember, better to light a candle than curse the darkness. I'm David DeLima. Cheerio.